Hey you guys, this is Mr. Sal. Uh, come to you with this system of equations with three variables. And we're going to solve it using matrices this time though. So hopefully you guys can see that this strategy, especially with three variables, would be a little bit shorter than to solve using elimination, which you can see in some of the other videos I have on the channel. Alright, so let's go ahead and set this matrix up. Uh, it works just like any other matrix. Uh, this is going to be augmented, so we have this column of X's, Y's, and Z's, which, and of course the column of answers, which allows us to write the augmented matrix, which we will do right now. So this is our new matrix right here. You can see we have the column of X's, Y's, and Z's, and whatever they equal, each of the individual rows, or the individual equations. Now remember, get out of this matrix is to have ones along this diagonal and then all of these other values are zeros and then it would give us some values for each of these individual equations in this column here and the reason for that is because when we pull these out you could see that this would be the x the one x from the x column which would give us our answer this is the y and the z and that would tell us our answer there so we're gonna have to look inside this matrix which we created right here and we need to get a 1 where that 3 is 2 and this negative 2 is along this diagonal and when we get a 1 in one of those positions it will allow us to eliminate the other values in order to create zeros in these other positions and you'll see what I mean by that in the video uh, but to do that we're going to be using elementary row operations so you need to really look at this matrix right here we can see that in these columns we have a 1 right here and here so this one is in the X column this one is in the Z column and we can work with either one of those but usually most people like to work with a 1 right here where that 3 is so what I can do is take the elementary row operation where I'm going to switch these two rows which would then put a 1 where that 3 is and that gives us this new matrix. So what this allows us to do, since we have that 1 right here in the top left corner, is it allows us to get rid of this 3 and 2 or to make them zeros, which is what we want. Now this essentially is the process of elimination. So what I'm going to do is perform elementary row operations on these two rows based on row 1. So using row 1, I'm going to add these to these two individual rows. But what I want is for uh, is for those values to be zero. So where the three is, I need a zero. Where the two is, I need a zero. So if I take one from row one, let's say that I multiplied it by three, right? So that I have the same value as this three right here. Well, if I make that a negative three, then I can eliminate it if I add those two together. So let's see, right? If we do negative 3 times this 1 plus that 3, then we get a 0 right here. And we're just going to continue this pattern throughout each of the individual columns. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 plus negative 1. That would give us a negative 7. Negative 3 times negative 1 is a positive 3 plus this 1 is 4. Negative 3 times this 1 is 3. Uh, negative 3 minus that 15 is a negative 18. So that gives us this new second row. So we essentially want to do the same thing to that third row where we want a 0 right here. So since I'm adding these two rows together, row 1 and row 3, uh, again I'm just going to take the same coefficient but make it the opposite which would give us a 0 there. And just to check, let's take a look. So we have negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus that 2 is 0. Negative 2 times this 2 is negative 4 plus this 3 is negative 1. And you can use your calculator to do this. Negative 2 times that negative 1 is 2 plus that negative 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 0. That's a negative 2. And this gives us a brand new matrix from this elementary row operations which we have performed. 
Now, in order to get this next, next matrix, you're going to see me do elementary row operations on all three of these rows, okay? And <clears throat> the reason for that is because I have a negative 1 right here. And that actually is going to make it really easy not only to get rid of this 2, but also to get rid of that negative 7. And you'll see what I do uh, through this process. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now all of these operations are based on row 3, right? So I'm going to work on, for example, row 1, row 2, and row 3 this time. But it's all going to be based on row 3, right? Like this. And since I already have row 3 in row 3, I'm just going to be multiplying that by something in order to change it. So let's look at row 3. If I multiply row 3 by 2, then I would have a negative 2, which if I add to this 2, would give me the 0 right where I want it, right? Now notice, as we do this, this is not going to change any of the values in the x column. And that's because the coefficient of x in the third row is 0. So as we add up here using the elementary row operations to these other two rows, it's not going to change any of those values because it's the identity property of addition. Now you don't have to fully understand that right now, but you will see it happen as we work with these rows, which is why it's important to get a 1 and then also to make these other values zeros. Now what we're doing here is as we work with these uh, three rows from row 3, you're going to see these other two values become zeros as well, which will allow us to use other elementary row operations, and it won't change the zero values. So let's start first with row 1. I need to multiply this negative 1 by something where when I add that value to 2, I get this zero. So if I take negative 1 and multiply it by 2 from row 3, and I add it to row 1, then I get that 0, which is what we wanted. Now if I take 2 times this 0 and add it to this negative 1, it stays the same. 2 times this negative 2 is negative 4, plus 1 is negative 3. And that completes that first row, where we can see we have a 0 right where we want it. Okay. So now we'll work with that second row. But notice if I multiply this one negative 1 by 7 and add it to this negative 7, then I get a bigger negative, so I need to make that the opposite, okay? So that would give me a positive 7 minus or plus, rather, that negative 7 would give us a 0 right here as well. And also, this negative 7 times 0 plus is 4, that doesn't change anything there. Negative 7 times this negative 2 is positive 14 plus this 18 that would give us a negative 4 there. And that leaves us with row 3, which really what we want is a positive 1 right here, where this negative 1 is. So in order to change that, I'm just going to multiply it by negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Negative 1 times 0 is 0. Negative 1 times 2 is 2. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch these two rows so that the 1 is technically in, in its proper place. You don't have to switch it at this point. Uh, you could work with these other two rows from here, but uh, I'm going to switch these just so we have the 1s in this diagonal right here. Now as close as we are to this, having 1s along this diagonal, we still need this negative 1 to be a 0. But first, let's go ahead and change this 4 to a 1, okay? Now, I could do this in one step. Some of you may be able to do it as well. But because this process is lengthy and some of you may be struggling with it as it is, I'm going to do this in two steps just to break it up a little bit. So to make that 4 a 1, I'm just going to be working strictly with that specific row, row 3. And since it's already a 4, I'm just going to multiply it by 1 fourth. Some of you may prefer to see that as... Uh, row 3 divided by 4, none of that's going to matter. It's still going to give us the value that we want there, 1. All right, so looking at this, 0 divided by 4 is still 0. 0 divided by 4 is still 0. 4 divided by 4 is 1, which is what we want right there. And negative 4 divided by 4 is a negative 1. 
All right, so in this matrix, we pretty much have zeros and ones everywhere we want them except this negative one right here, which we need to get rid of. And we can see now that we have zeros along row three, if we work with row three on row one, it's not going to be affecting any of these other values here, okay? So let's take row three, and we're gonna be operating on row one. And look, if we just add these two together, right? If I take row three, which in this case is one in this Z column, I just add it to that negative one. I will have the zero right where I want it. And again, it's not going to affect the rest of that matrix, which is what we want, okay? And you're gonna see how this works here uh, and how effective that is. So looking at that, we know we get a zero there. By the way, zero plus this one is still one. This zero plus that zero is still zero. And we have exactly what we wanted from the beginning. We have a diagonal of ones and zeros everywhere else. Now to use that final column, we have that negative one, and we will add that to this negative three, which is negative four. And behold, this is our column of answers. So these are in a matrix. Let's go ahead and pull each of these columns out. So we have x equals negative four, y equals two, and z equals negative one. And as an order triple, this would give us a negative four, two, and negative one. So just so everyone is clear, this is not complete though, all right? This is just the answer we think is the answer. So we need to go back to the original equations and check each of these three. All right, so checking the first equation, I've already done the problem for you, just the checking. And I've only replaced the x, y, and the z in this equation and then found that the statement is true. So we know that these three, this coordinate triple, gives us a true statement in this equation. But it needs to give us a true statement in these other two equations. So let's check those as well. All right, and there's the work for the second equation. And all I've done is replaced x with negative 4, y with 2, and z with negative 1, which again gave me a true statement. And finally, I would want to check the third equation, which I've done for you there, and we find that all of those are true. So that allows us, especially on a test, to know that our answer was correct. Now, if there are times it may not be prudent to check these right away, unless you're able to use a calculator, all right? But this allows you to see that your answers are correct if you do have plenty of time. Maybe you even have to come back on your test. And this shows all the work for it. Again, we did get to skip some steps because we weren't working one row at a time on some of these uh, matrix. So I hope you guys found that as helpful. Uh, now, that this video took a little bit longer than the elimination method. However, some of you guys can get really good at this and solve these really quickly, especially when you can start really combining some of the elementary row operations together. So if you found this video helpful, Please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and good luck on your math you guys.